Hey, good morning. God bless you. I certainly hope you are well. It is an absolute honor to get to see you today and spend a couple of minutes with you on this Saturday morning. Well, we are nearing the middle of May. Can you believe it? Here we are in May, rounding the corner and headed into the last part of this month. And I certainly hope that you're doing well, that your family's doing well, that you're doing well in your body, and I hope you're doing well in your mind, and I hope you're doing well in your spirit. I hope this season is providing benefit for you in your personal walk and your personal time with Jesus. Before I uh, get into my lesson today, I, I want to make an observation about this season of church leadership and this season of church ministry. For the first three or four weeks of our shelter-in-place period of time, the primary things that were being discussed were the creative ideas and the creative methodologies in which we were ministering to our congregations and to our communities. I heard all kinds of inspiring stories about drive-up church services, drive-by church services, <laughs> drive-through church services. All kinds of neat things were taking place at people's homes, in the community, on the church parking lot. All kinds of great stuff was happening across the life of this district. The last week, however, there's been a shift in the tone. From creativity and celebration of effective ministry to angst and frustration, in some cases, anger. With that shift has come less praise and more complaint. I want to remind you that society is hurting. The isolation continues to create a demand and opportunity for the church to minister. Continued isolation in our society continues to provide opportunity for you and me to become the essential part of society that we have always believed ourselves to be. I understand the frustrations you feel. I understand that they're real. I know that the challenges that we're facing are difficult. I understand you want this to end, but don't forfeit who you are and what you have been called to in the midst of frustrating challenging and difficulty. This is the very reason that Paul wrote these words in Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we'll reap a harvest if we don't give up. I know it's becoming heavy. Don't quit. I know that it is frustrating. I know that it's challenging. I know that we even get into seasons where we are feeling angered by this. Don't quit. Stay at it. Stay the course. Stay plugged in. Do the things that God has called you to do. Do the things that God has enabled you to do. Don't give up. For in due time. Now, the way I read that is we don't get to determine that. In due time, we will reap a harvest. My friend, I pray for the harvest. I pray for your harvest. I pray for the harvest in your community. I pray for the harvest at your church. Don't you give up. I know it's heavy. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. Don't you give up. Harvest is coming in this set of circumstance. I want to share a couple of principles with you, a couple more principles with you from Psalm 37 to assist you in staying consistent and fresh in this season that demands that we lead and we minister so effectively and so differently at the same time. The first thing I want to remind you out of Psalm 37 is that righteous people speak words of wisdom. Psalm 37 30 says this, the mouths of the righteous utter wisdom and their tongues speak what is just. Righteousness in part is proven by the fruit of your mouth. This is a great time to pray more and to talk less. Pray for leadership more than you speak about them. If you're spending your time speaking to God, you'll spend less time talking about others. The people who follow you deserve to hear your voice filled with wisdom when you speak. Your community around you 
those people that I already talked about that are hurting deserve to hear spiritual leaders speak what is just. The second thing is this in verse 39 and 40 of that same chapter, this uh, ultimately, this whole matter ultimately becomes a matter of faith. It says this in verse 39 and 40, but the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Because they trust in him. Faith is not just a word. It is a dictating fact of our lives. It is the, uh, the part of us that through our actions and responses that our faith is actually proven. Faith and trust show up in our actions. It says this in uh, verse 3 of Psalm 37. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Faithfulness, trust also shows up in our attitudes. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Psalm 37, 3. Your attitudes and your actions both are impacted directly by your level of trust and by the actions of your faith. And the last thing is that faith not only impacts your, your attitudes, it not only uh, 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 impacts your, your actions, I mean, in your attitudes, it also has an impact on your abilities. It says this in James 2.17, in the same way, faith by itself, if it's not accompanied by action, is dead. The actions, your abilities, the things that you're able to accomplish for the cause of Christ are directly tied in to your faith. I know that things are tough. I know there's lots of opinion. I know that we've even got a lot of anger going on right now. I just want to remind you, the rubber is hitting the road and the faith of our lives is being proven in our actions, our attitudes, and is having a direct implication on our abilities. God bless you as you round the middle of this month and start heading into the end of May. May this weekend be marked by God's favor and God's blessing and by your faithfulness. May wisdom, may wisdom be heard from you by those who are following you this weekend. God bless you, Pastor.